So again, welcome everybody. And I am Arne Finaustri here. I'm the Chief Learning Officer at the Consortium for Service Innovation. And uh, I head up the training and certification arm of the consortium. And we used to refer to this arm as the KCS Academy, but we decided to retire the KCS Academy uh, name when we started creating training and certification beyond KCS. So such as our recently released uh, Intelligent Swarming um, Fundamentals and Exam, which is in our learning center. Um, we also merged the two websites and hopefully improve, you guys are enjoying that improved uh, customer experience. Um, but the charter has not changed and we are still committed to bringing training and best practices on KCS and other um, consortium innovations to the broader community. And our KCS in action are, is just one of those uh, vehicles. And for today's KCS in action, I am pleased to introduce Jess Wu. And Jess is the customer success manager at Alation and is KCS practices certified. And we've had many requests for best practices on how to get started on your KCS journey. And while Jessica has been practicing KCS since 2014, she just recently started KCS adoption at Alation. And so Jess will be sharing her experience and provide many tips. And so whether you're just starting your KCS journey or looking at how to improve your existing KCS adoption, I'm sure you're going to find this KCS in action full of value for you. Um, but some housekeeping before we begin, this session is being recorded and will be posted on the consortium site as well as sent out to all who have registered. And we're also going to be providing Jess's uh, presentation um, when we send out the recording, as well as the, the chat. And I'm going to do a, a brief um, blog highlighting um, some of the key things. And in Jess's presentation, she has so much great information and also a lot of great information in the appendix. So you'll get a lot of great information sent out to you. And uh, please put yourself on mute during this event. And please post your questions in chat. So um, we have Sunita from Alation that will be monitoring the chat and will either answer them in chat or save them for the Q&A session at the end. And also wanna make sure you're aware of upcoming KCS in Action events. And Jennifer Mortcat, our community success manager, will be posting the link to the events in chat. And I'll also post um, my LinkedIn information if you want to be part of a future KCS in action, either presenting one or being part of a practitioner panel, or if you just want to connect. But I'm very excited about today's event and pleased to pass it over to Jess. All right. Thank you, Arvin. And good morning, everyone. And depending on where you are around the world, maybe afternoon and evening as well. Um, and as Arvin had introduced, we I am here to present Alation's part one of our KCS journey. We are in the middle of the adoption phase right now, and we are sharing what we've learned as long as well as the challenges we faced throughout our KCS journey so far. Um, a little bit about me. So uh, my name is fully Jessica Wu, but I really go by Jess. If I had a hidden talent, I secretly wish I was actually a carpenter. I love problem solving with my hands and making things um, and kind of wish maybe I went to DIY and construction work. Um, but here I am in tech, like a lot of you. And um, let's see. Yes, our, my favorite non-alcoholic drink is a Hong Kong milk tea. I do love alcohol at the same time, but this is what I drink every single morning to keep me awake. And uh, interesting. Sorry. And why I want to go into support and program management is because I am really passionate about helping people and listening to people. Doesn't matter where you're, whether you're my friends, is our customers or my colleagues, um, I am always there to help. And also, I like to work on programs and processes to help people work smarter, not harder. And therefore, KCS is one of those things that definitely helps people work smarter and not harder. A little, that's a little bit about me and um, about Alation. So we are a data intelligence software company, and our vision is to empower a curious and rational world by building a data culture in organizations. And to build that data culture, uh, we enable people to find data and understand them and understand how to use them. And on top of that, govern that data as well. And so our main product is the data catalog. Uh, and this is a data platform that basically pulls in 
um, data from or connects to different data sources to allow for easy searchability and discoverability all into one place. And this kind of sounds a lot like KCS, right? Where we're trying to pull information and knowledge into one place for easy searchability and findability. Uh, we also have features to um, help people understand how to use that data so that they can do proper analysis and interpretation. Mm -hmm. So our product also offers business glossaries to identify um, the kind of data you have and you're pulling in and using, um, as well as search functionality to search through all the data assets that you are connecting to in our product. So at the end of the day, we are helping you on mm -hmm. finding information. How can it be used? How can, should this be used? Um, and to help you make better data-driven decisions. So that's a little bit about our product. Um, a little bit about our company on a wider scale is that we are a high growth company. This will help give you context in the kind of environment that we're setting KCS, KCS up in. Um, we have about 450 customers. When I first joined, we were about 500 employees. Now we have over 700, probably close to 800 at this point. Uh, we are Centaur status, where we have reached 100 million plus in ARR, and we just raised our Series E funding uh, with a valuation of over 1.7 billion. So this is all really amazing growth for this company and a very exciting time for our company. And so that brings us to Alation support. We are proud members of Alation's customer love team. By customer love, we mean customer success team. Um, but we do provide amazing customer service to our uh, customers. So about Alation support specifically, we are a global team of 52 members. Of the 52, we have seven support leaders. We average about 32 cases per quarter. Um, and the support channels we offer right now is assisted, which is through Salesforce cases, mostly email correspondences at this point, um, and self-service options, for example, community forums, training from our LMS, and product documentation as well. Hours of support is 24-7, and we offer mission critical and premier support as well. And one thing I really want to highlight is the love that we get for support. This is probably one of the few companies where uh, we are definitely recognized as a vital part of the ecosystem um, in making sure and helping with the goal of retaining customers as well as driving customer loyalty. So you'll see um, a lot of recognition for us, whether that be in our all hands, from our investors, um, even in our Slack channels. So here's an example, when we were raising funding, investors were doing customer interviews, Customers were mentioning that product is great, but also we love how the team is genuinely concerned in making us successful. Our CEO talks about great things about our product, but also how great our team is in servicing our customers. And last but not least, in our kudos Slack channels, lots of love for support saying we are doing awesome work and that every positive interaction we have with our customers um, definitely counts and thank you for being awesome. So we don't just get one of these kudos per month, we get multiple of these, specifically calling out TSEs and support leaders and helping with our customers. Um, it's also important to lay the framework of historically how support was structured um, compared to today, because Historically, I don't really think KCS would have been as successful as it was today, and it is due to these big changes that KCS is, um, has successfully launched at Alation. So first was resources and funding. Uh, we were underinvested, um, and now we are fully invested with full executive buy-in. It is because of this really great full investment and buy-in that we're able to go all in in KCS. This includes buying training, certifications, and you name it, swag, fun things, free lunches, um, and more. And then the structure was tiered before. A lot of it was outsourced to India as well. Now we are a globally based company with full-time hires that are fully invested in the vision of this company. CSAT was under 79%. Now we're at a whopping 97%, which is an incredible number. Um, tools that we use was Zendesk and also knowledge was very decentralized. Now we have moved to Salesforce Service Cloud using the Salesforce Lightning knowledge to create articles and also now implementing Coveo Unified Search to pull all the different sources together um, to make it easier for our TSCs and our customers. 
And then our company values before was not included into the support culture, and now it is definitely included into our support culture. So I just talked about, I highlighted three things, how the company vision is kind of very aligned with just the KCS purpose as well, enabling people to self-serve to find answers. Number two is how much love we get for support and how recognized we are that we are a vital part of the company. And three, this big change in support starting um, from the middle of last year that really enabled us to go all in into KCS. And these are the three things I must say that kind of meant, you know, the stars aligned, really setting that stage up for our KCS success um, and our journey. So now we're going to dive into the KCS adventure that we've had um, in so far in the last, I would say, we started around January. So about 11 months, almost a year. Um, and I do want to preface that some of these slides have lots and lots of information on it, um, and really they are there for you to reference back on. But most of the time when we reach these slides, I will talk about the main points, and all the sub bullets underneath is really more for reference. Okay, so the backbone of the program is our CS Knowledge Team. Here is our wonderful executive sponsor, Daniel Rose. He's the VP of support and has been our biggest supporter and advocate for KCS. It's because he was always such a big supporter for us that we didn't really have to struggle with the whole trying to get executive sponsorship and buy-in to get this program going. Next are our knowledge manager, um, Sunita, who is our knowledge manager for APAC, which just recently joined in August. Super happy for her to join our team. There is me who oversees the entire program. Saving the best for last is our KCS mentors, also known as coaches. They are definitely also the biggest backbone of our, um, of our program. Without them, honestly, this program wouldn't be where it is. Their guidance um, and their uh, thoughts into designing this program has really made it a success. So thank you. If mentors are on this call, thank you. Thank you for volunteering to be mentors as well as working with me every single week on designing the program. So before KCS, a lot of you guys probably encountered the same experience. Data, I mean, information is everywhere. I'm a TSC, I'm trying to solve a problem. Where do I look? Do I look in JIRA for bugs? Do I look at old cases? Product documentation, ask somebody, could be any of these things. And so, the problems we were facing was that there were just too many places to search. And if we couldn't find something, who do we know who knows this answer? We'll Slack someone, we'll ask organically other people if they know. Um, and even if information was found, they aren't necessarily always support centric. So for example, product documentation, great how to's, great how to set up and use the product. But what happens when I have an error? And what happens when I run into a product issue? There's not much documentation how to solve for these things. Also, Confluence was a great starting point for amassing support-centric knowledge. However, oftentimes people would, would not know whether they were updated or whether they were maintained. So all of this leads to inefficiencies and increased resolution times when trying to solve issues for our customers. Um, and so to help solve for these things, we launched the KCS program. Of course, this is just the goal within our organization itself and support, um, but really the end goal is to make our KB a self-service option so that, uh, so that our customers can also solve issues on their own. End goal right there. At this moment, we're just looking at what we can do internally. So we designed the program phases and began thinking about that general guideline. And we thought about this guideline in phases. Phase one is laying that foundation, discovery and planning, buy-in from our leadership, understanding current state, building those relationships and making sure we had a master plan. Two is to dive into the design and training phase, designing the main components of the program, as well as starting off on the KCS fundamentals training. Phase three is training and adoption for the rest of the TSEs and the rest of the support team. So mentoring on those article writing and KCS practices was our main goal at this point um, and understanding how well we were practicing KCS. Phase four is leveraging and expanding knowledge where we're gonna push our articles to customers, have it be a self-service option 
and then go from there to understand what other additional projects and um, improvements we can work on. And then finally, <clears throat> phase five is maximizing, iterating, improving on what we have, using the analysis and data that we have to also drive product improvements um, and improvements on the program. So these were the general phases that we're following. And then now we're going to dive into the details of each of these phases. So in phase one, discovery and planning, that is definitely laying that foundation of what we needed to build um, for a support-centric and customer-centric knowledge program. So getting started, first and foremost, executive sponsorship, support leadership buy-in was super important. Again, this was really easy for us because we have incredible support from leadership already. The only challenge here was really integrating KCS discussions into our day-to-day -day conversations with the team. So for example, people are maybe doing case reviews or our managers are doing case reviews. Do we talk about, oh, maybe this could be a really great knowledge opportunity as well. And that is something that we are still trying to um, integrate into our conversations. Number two, most important thing of getting started is discovery. Before even planning and thinking about how to design it, uh, having one-on-ones with every single support team member and our stakeholders to understand current state, um, what their knowledge experience is, what they hope to gain from this program and pain points as well. And then of course, identifying and familiarizing with what we were using as our support tools, the resources we were looking through and our current workflows. And then the third thing that we dived into was creating that master plan. And this is the general framework of the master plan where we had an overview of the program with mission statement, vision, why we're doing it, um, and essential program components you'll see on the right here, mentorship program, roles and certifications, rewards and recognition, and more. And a lot of you who have implemented KCS understand that these are the main components as well. Uh, and then next is the communication plan and the impl implementation timeline of when we're going to launch what, the deliverables and milestones for everything. So this entire master plan is then pushed to the executive sponsors and support leadership for approval and buy-in. And again, because they were really bought into the program already, this had little pushback on, little to no pushback on whether this should be the plan or not. Okay, so part of that master plan, diving into a little detail of the master plan, is that program overview. And it was to develop a vision and mission for the program. The vision of our knowledge program is to help our customers realize value inhalation sooner rather than later by unblocking them from product issues and questions as quickly as possible. We want to make sure that they're able to self-serve, solve issues on their own, and get right back into using elation again. Our mission of how we're going to achieve this vision is to advocate for collective knowledge sharing and collaboration. And so, and making sure that all of this knowledge is centralized into one location that's easy to search and find to enable self-service, for not just um, internal employees, but especially also our customers. So that is the why of why we're doing this knowledge program, really helping our customers realize value inhalation quickly, improve their time to value in our product, and also our mission of how we're going to do that. So benefits and success measures is another part of the program plan, explaining to people what kind of returns would we see by implementing a successful KCS program. This is what we pulled from, um, uh, from case studies, as well as from the KCS practices guide, concentrating on the orange text here for the main benefits we'll see. Um, and the gray text is essentially numbers that are pulled from case studies of companies uh, that have practiced KCS. So saving time with quick answers is, of course, something that we would hope to see since knowledge is easy to find. We would see faster time to resolutions, more same day issue resolutions, improve CSAT because customers are getting their issues resolved quickly. Second, we would hope to see product improvements based on the trend analysis we're doing on our knowledge articles. Knowledge articles also help us determine top pain points. And so pushing these and working with product um, on these actionable insights we would hope to see product improvements. Three, um, we hope to see internal resource optimization. 
uh, TSEs are finding information faster. Therefore, uh, hopefully new hires will have a higher time to proficiency. And also current employees will have a higher employee satisfaction since less frustrations and finding answers, as well as an increased capacity in looking, um, saved from looking for answers. And they can spend that time on self-development or projects and many more things. And last but not least, this is our main, main goal, to enhance self-service success. And we say enhance here and not enable because we do already have self-service options. And so here we are looking to add KB as another self-service option. So at this point, we are hoping to see that the number of known issues coming into support decreases, which also means that cost savings for support. But also if customers are able to just use Alation more quickly because they're solving issues on their own, that will also help with customer retention and loyalty. And aside from aligning, um, showing the benefits of KCS, we also want to make sure that they were aligned to our company values. And the company values is super important to all of us because we do have an amazing company culture. We also uh, have a strong belief in our in following our relation values as well. So very high level, these are our relation values. And the strategic framework is an appendix, not gonna go through the whole thing, a high level, just how we're connected to our relation values is one, moving the ball is our first value. And we're moving the ball by helping our customers solve issues um, to our product and also unblocking them from using our product as quickly as possible. Two, measuring success through customer impact. We're lowering the effort in using our product through self-service options um, and a self-service KB. And therefore, again, just a more improved time to value for our customers um, in using our product. Building for the long-term, company is growing at a rapid pace. And we also wanna make sure that support scales with that growth. And what better way than to have our KB be a self-service option so that known issues are solved on the uh, customers can solve known issues on their own. And then that kind of saves us just more time for complex issues as well as helping customers who just need a little more hand holding. And then last but not least, listen like you're wrong is our last value. The KB is not really much of listen like you're wrong, but more so keep an open mind that there's always more to learn. And so with collective knowledge sharing, collective ownership of this knowledge, uh, what better way than to use knowledge sharing to learn more about the product, to learn more about our customer experiences. <clears throat> and the last part of one of the last things on our plan was to have a communication plan. You'll see the three phases up here uh, that we've been doing, discovering, planning, designing, and adoption. And the reason why I have these three phases is because the communication plan evolves a lot throughout these phases. And although we didn't really put onto paper these exact things I'm going to um, discuss, uh, this was how the communication plan naturally evolved. So in the beginning, it's all about that relationship building, those one-on-ones, planting those KCS seeds as well. We had always presented in our team meetings, the weekly team meetings of the vision, the what's in it for me and expectations. Also just planting seeds of formal with formal presentations of what the program's about and KCS introductions. Um, also dedicated communication channels to provide updates. And we also joined a lot of the support team channels as well to provide updates and keep people in the loop. So um, finally, at the end of the plan, we have the roadmap milestones and deliverables. So in the very beginning, you can see that we had only probably detailed planned about three or four months ahead. Thinking any farther than that is very overwhelming. And so again, not gonna dive into all the details here, but these were all of our weekly deliverables that we hope to achieve to really keep the momentum of the program going. Um, this was the idea of what the roadmap was gonna look like. Of course, things are always subject to change as the company grows and a lot of support processes are changing as well. So the idea was in Q3, we would have already been customer facing and by Q4, we're already in the maximizing phase. Are we at this point? Definitely not. And you'll see where we are at in the next couple of slides. All right, key success ingredients to this phase is, again, communication. I 
surprisingly am over communicating on this communication portion because I cannot stress how important communication is in all the phases of the rollout. Um, and then don't boil the ocean. When you're looking at the, all the phases, it's very overwhelming. Take it one phase at a time and only detail plan for maybe three to four months ahead. And the master plan was really used to just provide guidelines um, and goals for what we would want to do um, and keep us uh, on track. All right. Any questions, Sunita, from the chat about um, so far this design and discovery phase? Yeah. No, nothing yet. OK, perfect. So phase two, it was the bulk of what we were doing in Q2 and Q3, design and KCS training, um, making sure that we we're building a program that works for the support team and then designing those main components of the program. So the phase overview, um, we started off with multiple design sessions to gather feedback on these items in the bullet points. Then we also talked about with the team, the KCS roles, certification model, training plans for each of these roles, uh, how that mentorship program will look like. We'll talk about a little um, when we dive into the mentorship program, why we use the word mentors instead of coaches. Um, and of course, we designed this with our mentorship team as well. Technology plan, we use Salesforce uh, cases and service cloud. How in the world is this going to work with knowledge workflows and KCS practices? That's something that we had to look into. Um, and defining what those success metrics was. What were the key ones that we wanted to use and why we were using them? And then finally, making sure that we have one-stop shop for all program documentation. We did not document our program um, information into the knowledge base, but instead we have an internal intranet that documents a lot of our internal processes in general. And this is where we put all of that information. All right, so diving into the design sessions. The whole point of these design sessions was to include TSC's feedback and input. It was very, very important for us to have TSC inclusion in the design. So we had one hour Zoom sessions held daily for one week. Anyone who was interested in the program could join. And I want to say that we use Miro as a collaboration tool. It was amazing in brainstorming and mind mapping our different ideas on these virtual post-it notes and boards. Um, we went through article review processes, defining what these review processes would look like by KCS roles. Um, style guide, which uh, some of you guys would know as uh, the CSC or the AQI, we talked about what kind of formatting rules we want to see, um, whether it's concise, clear, and easy to read, and the whole spiel of what an AQI would look like. So all of this, uh, all of these um, information, the style guide became the content for our AQA. We call it the AQA, the article quality assessment, instead of the CSC or the AQI. And then designing those article templates, we landed on two, the Q&A and the resolution uh, article templates. Article states, we don't have work in progress, as you can see here, because the case is meant to be the work in progress with all the current case notes. When you're done with that case, it would be, uh, we made a button to just click it and it creates the entire closure notes into a draft article. Rewards and recognition ideas, we wanted to make sure that people uh, felt like they were being recognized um, and were rewarded with the right items. You know, were they plaques? Were they swag items? How do you like to be recognized? And this creates excitement for the program. Last but not least, we wanted to make the program um, fun and interesting. And so we did have a program branding brainstorm session, landed on space rocket ship themes. And you'll see that this is built out through our KCS roles and badges as well. All right, so here is our KCS roles and certification model. Um, and at the very top, managing and overseeing is the CS Knowledge Manager, which is uh, me. And then under me is Knowledge Manager Sunita for the APAC region. We hope to have a Knowledge Manager for each of these regions to manage the mentors as well. Um, Amia, we are hoping to hire someone Amia, but that may or may not happen. So right now, Sunita and I are working together to essentially mentor all of the Amia mentees. Um, and then below that, you can see that there are KCS mentors by region. And so far, we have 11 KCS mentors. This does include Sunita and I. 
The idea is to have a one to three ratio, but realistically, this was more of a one to two to even one to one ratio when we first began the program. And the reason why it was only one to one to one to two is because we did want to be very cognizant of our mentors' bandwidth. There were a lot of changes going on. We are very high growth. And so we didn't want to overload our mentors um, with a lot of mentees. We have about 40 program participants. Not everyone is a TSE. So we're already beginning to pilot the KCS program in other uh, departments of the company. So below uh, the KCS mentors, they are responsible and in charge of mentoring our program participants. Uh, you should be very familiar with these terms. We have the roles of KCS candidate, level one, KCS contributor, level two, and KCS publisher, level three. Uh, below that, we have KDE, they're not really below the program participants, but we haven't really designed this program yet, and therefore it's still in the dotted lines, and it's something that we'll look forward to in probably phase four or five. On the right-hand side here, you'll see the hours and time spent for each of these roles, and these are estimates that we have gleaned from our current experience of launching knowledge at Alation. We also tie the KCS roles and certification model to our TSC roles, our technical support engineer roles. We want to ensure that people were motivated and understood that as they um, went through, as they started at Alation and became more tenured, that we do expect them to become KCS publishers. So you can see here the start date, new hires, zero to six months, you're a KCS candidate, you're learning the KCS practices, you're learning how to write and um, uh, and you're being guided by a mentor. In the six to 10 month mark, we hope that you would be a KCS contributor. Um, there are certain benchmarks we are looking for people to meet at this point. And then in 10 or more months, we hope for you to be a KCS publisher. So a lot of these milestones of getting certified um, and becoming the next level of the KCS roles are incentivized uh, to, with our bonuses, with clear criteria to meet. Everything in the gray you see here is to be determined. We do have higher um, TSC roles and levels like specialists and staff engineers. Not really sure how we're going to relate them to KDE and KCS mentor roles at this point. And so here is a detailed um, slide on just a training plan by KCS role. This is not something I'm going to dive into super detail, but just to give you an idea of these are uh, the requirements we would see our KCS candidates, uh, publishers, and contributors go through to get to the next level. So for example, here as a KCS candidate, uh, you would have a four-week minimum training with a mentor. And during those uh, weekly trainings, you will meet weekly with your mentor to review written articles and identify new article opportunities um, from your recently closed cases. And the must completes to become a KCS contributor would be to complete the KCS Academy courses in our LMS. I must chime in here that these are the unlimited use KCS Academy courses that we purchased from the consortium. They have been really amazing in aligning our entire team on uh, the KCS fundamentals, the why, and our KCS practices. Really alleviated a lot of the uh, manual work that we would have had to done as knowledge managers. So love them, highly recommend them. We also put, uh, we also have required our TSCs to complete the KCS V6 fundamental certification. All of this is paid for by the company and no one has to pay out of pocket. So this really created that foundation and alignment of why KCS and what the KCS practices are. And then we had a homegrown KCS contributor quiz to ensure that um, our TSCs understood how to practice elation, um, practice KCS the elation way. So once those must completes are done, then voila, you are a KCS contributor. I'm not going to dive into what the requirements are to become a KCS publisher because honestly, these are not exactly fully vetted out yet, but these are just some of the ideas that we are thinking of at the moment. And that brings us to our overall KCS training plan. Um, we did not train uh, in waves. We just trained the mentors first to have the mentors be able to train on the TSEs. And really training began all the way in phase one already with the discovery and planning back in January um, with those knowledge intros and demos uh, for the knowledge program and the tools that we were going to use. And also intros on what KCS is about. 
Um, and then phase two of the designing and training the bulk of where designing the components happen. A little bit of training was happening already. We're mentoring the mentors. And then for TSCs, we were having them go through the KCS Academy courses to um, complete them and to also get KCS V6 certified. So that laid a good framework for Q2, where we were already beginning to train our KCS candidates to become KCS contributors. Um, at this point, they're working very closely with their mentors to practice KCS and learn how to write articles according to our style guide, um, and as well as um, according to our KCS uh, content standards. Um, by the end of Q2, over 85% of our TSCs were already KCS contributors, which is an amazing milestone. And then um, in Q3, which we had just completed, was where we were driving adoption. So the kind of training we were doing was no longer the weekly mentoring sessions, unless you were a new hire, but more so monthly sessions where you, we use the PAR as a calibration tool. PAR is process adherence review um, to calibrate on whether we were practicing KCS practices um, and really calibrating on what it means to practice KCS. So the goal here in Q3 was to drive adoption. And since the PAR process was completely new, drive understanding and gather feedback on the PAR process. Um, usual trainings were also happening and onboarding new hires. Right now we are in Q4, half a month in. We're still continuing the adoption phase and using the PAR to calibrate. And the goal is to drive further adoption as well as continue calibrating on the PAR. Second goal is to also level up a lot of our KCS contributors to KCS publishers. We are identifying those criteria at the moment. And then usual trainings, plus Sunita has developed some really amazing KCS role-based workshops that we'll be using to align our team on just refreshing them on what the KCS practices are and expectations. And so a lot of these milestones, we did incentivize them by tying them to the bonus structure. Note that we did not incentivize on knowledge activities like publishing articles or the number of articles you're improving. Um, and so by incentivizing these milestones, people were encouraged to actually get certified. People were encouraged to actually complete those KCS Academy trainings. And this has worked really well for us. Now, the bulk of, of course, the success of this program lies on this KCS mentorship program. They were our pilot group for everything KCS, essentially. The tools, the style guide, does everything even make sense? So here, the goal, taking straight out of KCS, is to make sure that we are mentoring our TSCs in searching, reusing, and improving and creating articles with as little guidance as possible. So this was kind of that North Star that we were looking at. And here I'll explain why we chose mentors over coaches. Coaches, people felt like had a more authoritative connotation. Um, so for example, you know, you're in a sports team, the coach is usually there to devise the strategies, talk about what the next best thing to do is. While mentors, people felt like it was more like a peer. You can lean on them for support and guidance. And that was the purpose of the mentorship program that we were trying to build. Mentor selection process was volunteers over nominations um, oh, and nominations from a survey that we sent out. And the mentor's mentor is basically the knowledge managers. We also have weekly mentors meeting. This was really vital in making sure that we were getting input and feedback from our TSCs on our program policies and processes, as well as aligning all the mentors on what was happening um, today. So very vital. And also training the mentors it was a two month training of them also just being the first pilot group to try those Casey's Academy courses, get certified, familiarize with what we were building and majority of the feedback on the courses and certification was very positive. What really drove excitement too was the fact that now the certifications you can post it in LinkedIn and it's really cool and it's very official as well. We also had a mentors playbook to align and set expectations and current tasks that mentors are working on these days really depends on who's on their team. KCS candidates continue, continue to have weekly sessions. If you're a contributor plus and higher, you have monthly sessions. And then they also run some article sampling and case sampling for the AQA in part. So the mentorship program, what's working really well is those weekly mentors meeting, document everything. 
the one to one and one to two ratio was great in the beginning. And now because mentors are getting used to um, mentoring as well as understanding what those best practices are, we're now kind of gravitating towards the one to three ratio. And just as KMs being very cognizant of their bandwidth, um, especially with the high growth of this company and the many changes that were happening. Challenges we are seeing right now is how do we mitigate mentor burnout? Lots of competing priorities. That's still something we're looking into um, and we don't really have an answer for that at this moment. Also as a mentor, how do I know that I'm not performance management, but I'm more so guiding and supporting? This is hard to differentiate when we do have dashboards with all these numbers on it. And at what point is it, oh, you know, here's how you can do better here versus, oh, you really need to improve here. Um, so that's something that we're also working on with these KCS workshops. Um, number of regional mentors and mentees has been difficult as well. Um, we have bulk of our mentors are in the U.S., so we are doing a lot of cross-regional mentoring, which means lots of time zone differences. And also there is a learning curve on mentoring based on KCS. Uh, a lot of our mentors have some kind of knowledge experience, but not necessarily KCS um, experience. Okay, so that's the mentorship program in a nutshell. Um, the next component we were planning is the technology plan here of the tools that we're going to use. So first and foremost, our goal here is to make sure we're integrating knowledge work and KCS practices into the case workflow as seamlessly as possible. Second, making sure that performance is transparent, whether that be for the program or for the participants of the program. So since we're using Salesforce as our uh, case management system, we're definitely going to be using Salesforce Lightning Knowledge as our knowledge base as well. Some things we looked at was making sure that our articles had templates, article states, um, audience, who they're for, and the ability to flag and fix. Making sure that we were able to create draft articles from our case closure notes with a click of a button and without all the copying and pasting involved. Really trying to make that workflow easy um, once the case is closed. And also making sure that knowledge search is within the case page so that they don't have to navigate elsewhere for it. We also had mentoring tools to look at. Um, part of those is the AQA form as well as the PAR form. These were built as custom objects into the Salesforce, into Salesforce, and also making sure that we have permissioning in Salesforce that goes by the KCS roles um, that we had. And of course, dashboards and reports. Did we have a migration plan? We actually didn't. Instead, we followed the concept of demand-driven. Um, concept where if you're going to use that Confluence doc to solve your case, yes, definitely create an article for it. If you're not, then we can just kind of leave it in Confluence. Um, we also use the old Confluence docs as a training board for our mentors to test the style guides and templates on. So these were great to kind of just offer some content um, for testing. Challenges we're facing right now is Salesforce search isn't great. Filters are kind of hard to use. Finding draft articles is difficult. So we are implementing Coveo search um, very, very soon, probably at the end of this month. Um, closure note fields also don't encourage TSEs to draft articles as they're troubleshooting a case. Oftentimes, a lot of our case summaries are in emails and not in the closure note fields. So what happens is even if we have a button to create uh, articles from these note fields, a lot of that content may not be in those note fields. Again, don't have a solution for this, but we are looking into this for sure. All right, measurement matters. What key metrics are we looking at? This is, again, one of those slides with lots of words on the right-hand side. I'm just going to go through very high level the uh, measures that we are using. So the key metrics here is case age which is also days taken to close the case, TTR, time to close. And this is definitely an outcome that we're looking at because with a knowledge base, we will hope TSCs are solving cases faster. So we expect this case age to go down. Two, CSAT. If we're solving issues faster for our customers, naturally, hopefully they will give us, uh, they will be more likely to give a good CSAT. And this is an outcome that we're looking at. Three, create versus reuse. We are looking for the create 
um, creation rate and our reuse rate to intersect because this is a great indicator for whether we are customer ready or not. And that is an activity we're looking at. Percentage of cases with articles, some people know this as participation rate as well, um, is another activity we'll look at because it is also an indicator for customer readiness, um, whether we have enough content on known issues to enable a good chance of customers to self-serve when they use our knowledge base. Uh, these are in the middle of activity and outcome um, because they're not quite activities or outcomes, but more so coaching tools. And so that would be the AQA score used to calibrate on the style guide and the PAR score, which is used to calibrate on whether we are practicing KCS or not and what it means to practice KCS. And last but not least, we are working on a balanced knowledge scorecard um, because we feel that this is a much more holistic approach to measure um, whether someone is doing well in knowledge or not and whether they are practicing KCS. So of course, all of these measures are wonderful and great, but they're only wonderful and great if you can actually visualize them and know where to find them. So we created these dashboards in Salesforce. You'll see in the short clip on the right, me going through the dashboards that we have. Um, this includes overall program performance dashboards, KCS mentors dashboards, manager dashboards, as well as content breakdown. You can see in the bullets here, the items that we have on these dashboards to ensure that everyone has the information they have to track performance and to understand program performance. So again, re-emphasizing here, the ever-evolving communication plan and the design and training phase, we really concentrated on those brainstorm sessions. We didn't have, we already had those intro sessions and now we're working together to design the program together. A lot of the brainstorm was done in the design sessions, mentors, weekly meetings, and leadership meetings. Setting those expectations. So we had more formal presentations, but rather than introducing, it was expectations on the training and program kickoff. Um, and then also just continuous updates in our leadership meetings on what's happening with the program. Um, and then last but not least, we wanted to make sure that support was set up for success as they went through the KCS certifications. So we also had live study sessions hosted for anyone who wanted to make sure that they understood what the certification was about and on what to expect. It was anyone who attended the session so far has had a 100% passing rate. So I'm sure this has been really helpful for many individuals. Okay, so where are we at today? Phase three um, is training and adoption phase. This is where we are today. And I'm gonna bring this back. This is what we had thought the roadmap looked like. And this is just a reminder that this is not always how it rolls out. So you can see here, those phase four and phase five has disappeared. And now phase three has stretched to Q4 where we are training and adopting throughout Q4 at this moment. And so with that, um, you know, we're just continuing those PAR measures again to measure adoption, to calibrate, improve on current processes, and really solidify that criteria to become a KCS publisher because this is super, super vital in enabling just in time publishing for when we are customer facing. And then in parallel, we are also starting phase four, which is defining those nuts and bolts and tools that are needed to be um, customer facing in Q1. And so defining those self-service measures, uh, planning for uh, the tooling, and running those KCS role-based workshops to make sure everyone's aligned on what it means to practice KCS, um, and as well as revamping our sub-programs. So this is the impact uh, numerically and metrics-wise on what the KCS program has helped us with in the last six months. And this is just Q2 and Q3. Activity-wise, we've published over a thousand articles. Uh, we have 43% of our cases with articles, 93% AQA score, which is pretty amazing, um, and also a PAR score of 68%, which means that we are practicing knowledge 68% of the time when there's an opportunity to based on the cases that we have sampled. Again, um, here is our create versus reuse chart. We've actually intersected in Q2 already. So those are one of the indicators already stating that we are probably customer ready. Outcomes, most important parts of uh, what we're trying to measure is are we actually helpful to our internal folks? Um, and uh, what are we seeing from this successful launch? So kudos from our internal teams is always great to hear. 
like someone from the PS team said, man, before the KB articles happened, I would have to tell customers, I'll get back to you on this and then look at Slack channels and talk to multiple people. But now with the KB, it's been a huge time saver. I always search first. And then if I can find something, it can help the customer right away. That is exactly what the purpose of the KB is for. And it's amazing to hear that other teams are experiencing this. Case age uh, is one of those outcomes as well. We hope to see case age go down. And so we have seen the cases where an article was reused to solve um, the customer's issue uh, have a case age of 18% less, which is basically closing cases 3.6 days faster. CSAT, the cases where an article is attached do have a higher CSAT at 96% than those compared uh, with cases with no articles attached at 94%. Both are still incredible numbers, but articles do help push that CSAT percentage higher a little bit. All right, back to that communication plan in the training and adoption phase. What we're doing is just talking about knowledge a lot, not just within our support teams anymore, but literally presenting in all of the all hands. We're presented in support all hands, customer success all hands, as well as company all hands. Uh, we've also implemented quarterly knowledge kickoff meetings to celebrate our wins, um, and everyone gets free lunch to make it more fun. And also the reminder of why we're doing this and setting expectations for the quarter. We continue to strengthen ties with our support leadership team, where we have weekly one-on-ones now with all of our line managers for alignment and ensuring that they understand um, where the program is heading. What we're working on is making sure that we have program performance updates on a monthly basis to highlight our key metrics, as well as present where we are at with the quarter's goals and are we gonna get there. So looking forward, next six months, we are heading full on into the phase four, leveraging knowledge and expansion phase. I've talked about this in a bit on that timeline already. We're in Q4, we're planning for that customer facing launch. Um, and then launching role-based workshops to align the team on KCS practices. And a shout out to Sumita for helping to revamp our sub-programs, which includes rewards and recognition, mentorship program, and the training program. Q1, our we will be customer facing. Super exciting for this launch. And with that, I'm sure will come many, many new projects um, that comes along with that launch. So also planning that KDE program is our goal in Q1 and in really finalizing that strategy to incorporate non-support teams. What's working well? There's a really big list of what's working well. There's a very concise checklist available in Appendix B on things that have uh, make on things that have worked well for us that you can check off. First and foremost, strong leadership buy-in is key. A well-supported KCS mentorship program, being always available to help the mentors is very key as well. Don't boil the ocean, only plan a quarter ahead at a time, otherwise it gets really overwhelming. And then making sure that whatever case system you're using is well integrated with the knowledge workflows that you're trying to implement. So here is just some feedback that we got from a survey on are our tools actually working? And uh, the one of the feedbacks for which best describes the Salesforce Lightning knowledge base, majority of the people did say that it was somewhat helpful uh, to mostly very helpful and extremely helpful. This is really great in letting us know that we are building the right tools for our support engineers. Next, how easy is it to use our Salesforce Lightning knowledge base um, with case handling workflow? Also great feedback here. Majority of people said very easy to somewhat easy um, and a little bit and extremely easy. This is great because no one has said not so easy or not easy. Again, we are building the tools that are working for our TSCs. Next, make sure you're including TSCs into building the pro processes and policies. And these really for us are mainly our KCS mentors. Every now and then I would run polls in our global Slack channels uh, to also get feedback and buy-in as well. Always over communicate. You've heard me over communicate on the communication plan so many times already, but I cannot stress enough how important this is on always talking about the why, the vision, what's in it for me for each of the stakeholders and the big picture. The KCS Academy courses I'm going to emphasize here again was really vital in aligning 
our team on the KCS fundamentals, as well as why we were doing KCS, um, was a huge win there in purchasing um, these courses. Incentivizing knowledge milestones. So again, not the activities, but getting certified, becoming KCS publisher. These are all incentivized, and I highly recommend that to drive momentum and promote adoption. Um, and then using those PAR to calibrate on KCS practices and also mentor on KCS practices has been really, really helpful in driving adoption. And last but not least, one place for all program resources um, and making sure you document everything. And finally, um, our challenges that we are facing today is because we are a high growth company, just so much change in competing priorities, not enough time to practice knowledge. Um, and so it's been difficult to publish articles just in time, even from our top champions of the team. And how we're gonna help with this is by expanding the team with more um, new hires and also launching our KB as a self-service option. So that should decrease the number of known issues coming in and therefore alleviate some of that pressure of handling so many cases. Uh, understanding the big picture and vision has been a challenge at times because, um, you know, in support, usually you're just concentrating on that one case, helping that customer right now, really going full in on helping that customer. So repeating that vision and mission, showing a person's impact is very important in um, helping understand that big picture and vision. Tools, we talked about this, search isn't great. Also, edit, article editing UI is actually cumbersome because the shortcuts aren't great there, for example, for code blocks or other kinds of formatting items. Um, that we may look into a new tool in Q1, but hasn't been solidified yet. For search, we're going to implement Coveo. Um, also, a little bit of confusion on processes and practices where, you know, when, what does an article opportunity look like? Um, also, the style guide is a bit time consuming and there's challenges to flagging and fixing because there is this sense of ownership of, oh, someone wrote that article, should I really be improving it since I didn't write it? Um, so for number one, we're helping with the alignment on uh, via the PAR. For number two, we are condensing that style guide into a one pager with must haves and nice to haves. And then for number three, we are working on um, with those KCS workshops to align on what it means to practice KCS with the flag it and fix it and tips and tricks as well. Okay, and that wraps up our entire KCS journey. Uh, went through lots of slides. I hope that this has been really helpful in helping you understand what we did and key things that we did to make this launch successful. Okay, questions and answers. <laughs> yeah, and, and thank you, Jess. This was so informative and, and thanks for all the time that you put into this. Um, and as well as, so we are gonna send out the presentation and uh, as Jess mentioned, she has a lot of great information in the appendix also. So this will be a great resource for you. And then we'll send out the recording as well as the chat log. And we didn't get to all of, all of the, the questions, but what Jess has kindly volunteered to do is answer all the questions offline. And we'll send that out to you when we send out the recording and the, uh, the presentation. And uh, also, Jess is more than happy to be connected with you via LinkedIn. So if you have some follow-on questions after you digest everything, she is happy to, uh, to connect with you and help you out. And so again, thank you. We're at the top of the hour. So thank you all so much. And I uh, really appreciate it. And thank you again so much, uh, Jess. Really appreciate the great presentation. Yeah, thank you, everyone. All right. Have a great week.